We really have had a couple come to Washington that has taken Washington by storm in the last two months. A distinguished diplomat, a distinguished public servant, uh, who I think can really bind together all that we have felt should be bound together between Mexico and the United States. He acknowledged many times that the formative years he had in the land of Lincoln contributed immensely to what he is today. I give you the President of the United States, Ronald Reagan. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Oh, please. Senator Percy, I thank you very much, my fellow Illinoisian. But you'd find you'd find how lovely it was to be a transplant to California yourself if you wanted to try that now. I'm uh, temporarily down here, and to show my simpatico with all of you, I um, am looking forward to returning to Rancho del Cielo. We can't helicopter because the California sunshine is shut out today, but uh, waiting me up there is a wonderful gift from south of the border from President Portillo, an Anglo-Arab horse that's waiting for me, and I'll be riding as soon as I get back up there on him. But the senators, the representatives, the delegates, the excellencies, the ambassadors, you ladies and gentlemen, I've always had a great regret that in that little school in Illinois where I was compelled to study for a couple of years of foreign language, they did not offer Spanish. I find a great beauty in it and a great desire in that language. And my desire to speak in that was heightened some several years ago when I was governor of California. And I went on a mission to Mexico City representing the President of the United States. I found myself addressing an audience there. And then the thing that any speaker hates more than anything else, I sat down to very unenthusiastic and scattered applause. The next speaker, it only heightened my pain when he, speaking in Spanish, was being interrupted frequently with the warmest kind of applause. And trying to hide my embarrassment, I clapped louder and longer than anyone else and started before anyone else each time. Till our then ambassador leaned over and said to me, I wouldn't do that if I were you, he's interpreting your speech. <laughs> But this distinguished series of conferences began 21 years ago in the magnificent city of Guadalajara, Mexico. And you've often enticed each other to meet outside of the capital cities, and I applaud that, that practice. I'm especially pleased that this year's conference is being held in my now home state of California in this beautiful place by the Pacific Ocean. Santa Barbara is very much a part of the historic relationship between our two peoples. As you know, we value, as the Senator said, our candid and friendly relations with our closest neighbors. And I appreciate the efforts that you're making in this conference to build upon our goodwill. I have the greatest admiration and respect for President Lopez Portillo, who I understand addressed this conference during its meeting last year at a similarly beautiful location, Manzanillo, Mexico. Mexico, I've learned that much. <laughs> During my 16 months in office, we've developed a rapport fitting good neighbors and good friends. President Lopez Portillo and I have met a total of four times last year. The Mexican and United States cabinet members have exchanged frequent visits, and Secretaries Haig and Castaneda are on such cordial terms that they call each other Al and Jorge even when debating fine points on our respective approaches to Central America's problems. And you know, in the world of diplomacy, most diplomats forget they have first names. And while occasionally there are differences in approach between our two countries, the honest goodwill which exists between us has ensured the maintenance of dialogue and created new opportunities for cooperation. After all, we strive to achieve the same goal, 
a free and prosperous America, north, south, and central. Mexico, along with Venezuela, took the lead in furthering economic and social development among the Caribbean basin states. Your use of oil has demonstrated a tangible commitment to this end. We're pleased to be working together with you and other nations in this area toward a more prosperous and politically stable hemisphere. Much has been accomplished on our agenda of bilateral issues. Last June, President Lopez Portillo and I set up two groups, a binational commission headed by our two foreign secretaries and a cabinet level joint trade commission. No miracle cures were expected on the issues which these two bodies have addressed, but their deliberations have helped us to focus more clearly on the issues and the opportunities before us. Apart from some technical impediments being addressed in the Joint Trade Commission, trade moves largely unhindered. In fact, it is at an all-time high. Mexico now ranks as the United States' third largest trading partner. Total two-way trade should reach $35 billion in 1982. Ongoing cooperation continues in many areas, ranging from our joint efforts in science and technology and cultural exchange to urban development planning and developmental cooperation along our 2,000-mile-long unarmed border. As is inevitable between two close neighbors, there are problems to be worked out. But by dealing with each other in good faith, by working together and consulting on these problems, we have demonstrated that there are opportunities as much as there are obstacles. We share an understanding of the enormous benefits that we can derive from a positive bilateral relationship. I can honestly tell you that relations between the United States and Mexico are good. The friendship between our peoples is excellent. Our national legislatures have a significant role to play in our relations. I look forward to working with all of you for the benefit of both our peoples and for the peace and progress of this hemisphere. I know the bloodshed that is taking place around the Falkland Islands is of deep concern to every nation in this hemisphere. We understand and are sensitive to Latin American sympathies in this crisis, something which made our own decisions more painful and difficult. I hope you will also, as neighbors and friends, do your utmost to understand the importance we attach to the principle that armed force should not be used to assert claims in an international dispute as contained in Resolution 502 of the UN Security Council. Let's make certain that emotions don't blur the truth of how close we really are during this tragic conflict. We all did our best to prevent bloodshed. Now that hostilities have started, we are united in the desire for a negotiated settlement and a peaceful resolution of the dispute under the guidelines set down in UN Security Council Resolution 502. For our part, we'll continue to push for the resumption of negotiations. The essential issues of sovereignty must be addressed, but this is a matter for the British and the Argentinians to decide for themselves peacefully. In times like these, meetings like this one of today are even more significant because they serve to reaffirm the common goals and the shared values that bind us together as friends and neighbors. I wish you all the best in your deliberations here in Santa Barbara. Bless you all in what you're doing. Thank you for picking this place. Thank you. With the permission of the President, I would like very much to introduce Ed Meese, his valued colleague and a friend of all of ours, and friend of yours. And now to confuse the translators, Señor Presidente, muchas gracias por su discurso. 
uh, allow me to become, as a citizen, an extension of you, Mr. President, so that if one of your citizens speaks Spanish, then you speak Spanish. And uh, uh, if I speak Spanish, I then will be an extension of the presidency. So, el presidente habla español. Porque uno de sus ciudadanos habla español. Y como símbolo de cariño, admiración y respeto a nuestros colegas que nos honran con su presencia, el presidente y yo, en nuestro idioma, les damos la más sincera bienvenida. I just welcome in Spanish in your behalf and my behalf. I think we did all right. <laughs> And now to introduce a very distinguished Mexican, a veteran legislator, truly a citizen of the world who has labored in the behalf of Mexico, both in the field of labor and as a legislator that I have known for practically my tenure in the Congress, the leader of the Senate of the United States of Mexico, our friend, our colleague, a great and distinguished Mexican Senator Joaquin Gamboa Pascoy. Señor. Presidente Ronald Reagan, señores copresidentes de la delegación norteamericana, representante La Garza y senador Percy, tiren en cuestiones que persisten en espera de la solución adecuada y no debemos diferir problemas que tengan trascendencia recíproca. Haciendo un comentario general de los temas a tratar en nuestras juntas de trabajo, sintetizando pudiéramos decir que al analizar las relaciones entre México y Estados Unidos, se abordarán esos intercambios presidenciales, se ventilarán los problemas comerciales de energéticos, agropecuarios, de pesca de materias primas y productos terminados, se harán planteamientos de turismo y de intercambio cultural y tecnológico y desde luego habremos de reiterar la decisión inquebrantable de llevar adelante la lucha conjunta para abatir la producción, tráfico y consumo de drogas que tanto lastima a la juventud. En materia de exportaciones nacional, es decir, debe contemplarse esta cuestión con las características propias de una vecindad permanente y de complementariedad económica, que consideramos está por encima de una mera controversia arancelaria circunstancial. Let me thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Senator Gamboa. Thank you, Mr. President, for honoring us to be with us. Uh, your words of advice and your challenge will be followed, and with that, I hereby declare closed our inaugural session, and we will begin our deliberations, hopefully at shortly after 11 uh, in the two committee rooms. Muchas gracias, señor presidente. Thank you very much. Thank you.